What's up everybody? I'm the Man Goose. You are awesome and it is time once again for a monthly update of the games I track. The video today only covers the events for the month of January 2021. I'll go over anything significant that happened as well as what the current hero for each get her uh, current hero current hero lineup is for each game that I track. I do want to mention that um, as I've said before, I don't cover PlayStation announcements unless we get something more than just a company stating their intention to develop for console. They've all stated that intention, so I don't cover it when they say it. I only cover it if we have like some real concrete evidence. I don't want to give anybody false hope. Everybody wants this game on PlayStation. I want it on PlayStation. You want it on PlayStation. Everybody wants it on PlayStation. So I don't cover anything PlayStation related unless I know for absolute certain. So uh, let's get started with Overprime, who had the most significant news to report this month. So Team Soul Leaf has been very busy with their Paragon successor called Overprime. What I feel is the biggest news is they found a publisher called Netmarble. This will give them the funding and the credibility they need to take Overprime to the next level. I do need to correct some bad info I put out during my last update. The Overprime servers are still open. The game is currently playable. However, new account creation is disabled. So if you want to play, you have to have already made an Overprime account or you may be able to get into get someone's Smurf account. People are giving away Smurf, their Smurf accounts that they created via Discord. So get into the Overprime Discord. Maybe somebody will give you a Smurf account, and then you can play that way. Uh, speaking of those servers, they recently switched to Amazon, which seems to be the number one choice for many of these companies. They've been building their own assets for the game, much like every other Paragon successor. They want to start with a... You know, Paragon as the base and then branch out into something a bit more. You can see some examples of minions that they've created and like a little prototype map. Uh, that's just like future plans. Soul Leaf currently has two studios with 27 members, four of which are former Epic employees, with one of those having worked directly on Paragon. They also held a community survey to pick the next hero to be added and Revenant won. So Revenant is now in the game. They, uh, that happened sort of at the beginning of the month and then Revenant was patched in towards the end of the month. Um, you can take a look at that survey and that'll give you a pretty good idea of who they plan to add next. Overprime's current lineup is Lieutenant Bellica, Murdoch, Gideon, Twin Blast, Kwong, Countess, Fing Miao, The Fey, Rampage, Kalari, Sparrow, Narbash, Greystone, Chimera, Muriel, Severog, Howitzer, Sereth, Grim, Boris, Shinbi, Grux, Gadget, Steel, and Revenant. I should probably mention that they have changed the names of all these heroes. They did that while they're in talk with talks with Epic about trademarks and stuff. Next up is Predecessor by Omega Studios. Pred announced that they have been giving all their heroes passives. Any hero that already had a passive as part of their kit, like Sparrow and Chimera, will have those passives moved and they will get new active abilities in their place. No word yet on what those abilities will be. The announcement also talked about Drongo in the lineup as if they had announced that officially. I don't think they ever officially announced that Drongo was in the game. I knew he was the next hero to be added, but now it's completely and totally confirmed Drongo in Predecessor. So Predecessor's current lineup is Muriel, Narbash, Gideon, Gadget, Lieutenant Bellica, Severog, Fing Miao, Steel, Chimera, Sparrow, Murdoch, and Drongo. Not too much to talk about with uh, Strange Batters this month with their game Fault. There was an announcement in their Discord that they're currently hiring, so you can check that out if you want to find out what positions they may have available if you're interested in working for them. Morgesh is done with her battle pastime and is now available to everyone to play. Other than that, they've just continued to balance in patch changes. Um, uh, ba well, patch in balance cha balance in patch changes. They've continued to patch in balance changes, bug fixes, and thankfully, some updated sound effects. Current fault lineup is Boris, Countess, Decker, Gadget, Gideon, Greystone, Grim, Grux, Kalari, Chimera, Kwong, Lieutenant Bellica, Morgash, Murdoch, Muriel, Narbash, Richter, Severog, Sparrow, Steel, and Twin Blast. 
Some pretty significant things happening right at the end of the month with Undying Games is a third person MOBA called Ethereal. They updated their website giving us access to a significant amount of lore, some new images of skins, and most importantly, a complete searchable database of items. Throughout the month, they've also provided info about a loadout system that allows you to make custom builds prior to a match and then assign them to your selected myth. Along with those builds comes the familiars, little sidekicks that you can select based upon the build you're using that will have their own unique passive effects and active abilities. They released information about not only a day-night cycle for the map, but also random weather events that will affect the map. We're told that the myths will not be affected by the time of day, but some of the items will be, and we got to see that in the item builds. The weather currently only will have a cosmetic effect on the game, however there may be very rare weather events that have game-wide effects. The last update was about Tower Spires and Elders. If you didn't know, the core for Ethereal will be a large living titan that will ha you have to defeat in order to win. He has AoE and single target attacks. During the extra life stream, uh, you may have seen me play like the little demo version of Ethereal. And yeah, the Elder was kind of badass and hard to kill. The projected lineup for playable myths in their alpha will be Leah, Aran, Dante, Noxus, my personal waifu, Malaya, Marina, and Talos. Project Stamina, which is set to be a spiritual successor to Gigantic, keeps chugging along this month. They finished fixing all the bugs that resulted from their upgrade to version 4.25 of the Unreal Engine. The upgrade has been a massive improvement to their development environment. They set up the Niagara VFX pipeline so their visual effects artist can implement his work without the assistance of the engineering team. The Unreal Engine update also allows for improved monetization systems and fixes the root motion system, which will allow Project Stamina to make movement smoother without the need to write custom code. The team has also been consulting with a former member of Motiga, the company that created Gigantic, to design the game's uh, core game mode. They also picked up a new narrative director to take over the uh, reins of the lore. Can't wait to see what lore we get out of uh, Project Stamina. Uh, their director has been doing a lot of their lore, and it's been pretty damn good. Um, if this guy's even better, I mean, there's that that's awesome. They also tell me that they will be back to building their characters for the game. Um, this is a process that they put on hold while they were upgrading the engine. So, so the characters that we currently know about are Kira, R4, Matani, Akka, Geist, and the community-built hero that we don't... I know what he looks like because I'm a member of their Patreon, and if Patreon members know a lot about Cake, but uh, that's his code name is Cake. It's Community Architected Kit Experiment. So... Um, if you want to become a patron, a patron of Project Stamina and find out a little more about Cake, vote on some things and get a little more info than the normal community, you can uh, you can do that. King's Hunt, which is a strange mix of MOBA, Tower Defense, and Dark Souls in development by Vaki Games, will have another open alpha test in February starting on the 3rd. All you have to do to play is find the game demo on Steam. Just search King's Hunt and there'll be a little demo button. You click on that, you get the game, and you'll be able to play it for five days. Again, starting on February 3rd. I had a lot of fun with this game. I highly suggest, even if you guys are kind of on the fence about it, just give it a try. It's free, so, you know, give, give it a go. King's Hunt roster includes Lagina, Knight, Demigod, and Enchantress. I know they had another hero planned, but uh, I don't know if that's going to be in the demo or not. I guess we'll find out. Raven Blade, the point capture arena brawler in development by Medallion Slate, has been making some changes to their net code. So, so far, the archer has been upgraded, and holy shit, she feels so much smoother than before. I'm looking forward to the entire lineup getting the upgrade. They currently have a healer, mage, archer, tank, warrior, fighter, and assassin. And that's all I have for this month. No updates for Core or Phoenix Rising. I'll keep my ear to the ground and bring you guys more updates next month. If anything really huge happens, I'll announce that via its own video. For now, this is the Mangoo signing off. You guys have a good one. Mangoo!